Hello, everybody. My name is Brock, and uh, welcome to our presentation of student safety in a digital playground. I am uh, joined today, actually, my co-host is going to be Gretchen Thompson. She's, uh, yeah, she's going to be running through the majority of the presentation here. And uh, so just as a kind of a quick little intro, I think, well, first of all, thank you to all the Summit sponsors um, presented on this page here. Um, thank you. It would not be possible without you guys. And we are actually presenting from Gaggle, one of the sponsors. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, did the digital playground, it, think of uh, our, our space as, a, as our digital world as a digital playground. And uh, we would never send all of our kids out onto a, a physical playground without any, any monitors um, or adults out there to kind of oversee. And that's kind of what's happening in the digital playground, unless you have a service like Gaggle. So um, I'm going to pass it over to Gretchen and let her kind of get into more depth and, and let you know how and, and why it's so important to, uh, to keep an eye on things in, in that environment. Gretchen? Thank you, Brock. Yes, my name is Gretchen Thompson. I am the regional vice president of Gaggle. Um, Brock is our regional sales manager in California. So if you need anything at all, he is a gem. I've worked with him for a very long time in multiple uh, organization. So he is my, my right hand for sure and does a great job in California. I have a background in education. So uh, my previous experience is language arts at the high school level. I have been a principal uh, and retired from Cleveland. Um, I was in two of the larger urban districts here in, in Cleveland, Akron, Ohio, um, in CNI. So safety is very, very important to me. If you are not familiar with Gaggle, we're going to share a little bit about what Gaggle is. I really like to take this into more of a professional development training so so that we can learn. You know, we don't know what we don't know as administrators sometimes. Um, and it, it's good to be able to bring some collaborative conversations back into your directors, your cabinet meetings um, about what it is that we can do to protect these children in a uh, virtual distance learning or brick and mortar environment. And obviously, all of you have uh, felt some changes, certainly um, in the last three months, as have we and we want to walk through some of those changes and what we've seen. So first and foremost, thank you for including us. We're happy to sponsor. Um, at any point in time, if you have any questions, please use that chat box. Brock is going to be monitoring that and will stop me as we go through so I can answer those questions in real time uh, and make sure that I'm giving you some good quality feedback so that you uh, get your questions answered. So to start, one thing I always like to say um, as we move into this is we are by no means um, a filter or a firewall or one-to-one -one device protection or social media platform. What we are is the insurance to all of the above. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Um, a lot of times we get mistaken for, for that piece. And especially in this um, pandemic that we've been through, I wanted to share this quote with you uh, so that you can go ahead and read through that. This is a uh, technology director in Texas um, who has been a, a very big advocate for us. She came in uh, last year when really they were in a financial um, hiccup. They had a bunch of flooding um, in that Houston area, which I'm sure you guys are familiar with hearing about. Her kids were displaced. Um, we had to worry about where they were gonna be fed, all of the above, right? And she wanted me to share this quote with any of the districts that I'm presenting to now, especially in the last three months, because having them implemented Gaggle with the budget cuts was really important to her because she knew that we would be able to essentially keep an eye on um, those kids that were not just the naughty kids, but the kids that were really sad and um, be able to have a pulse on being able to intervene before things got crazy or where they weren't able to see a face-to-face -face person within the district, their teacher, an administrator, et cetera. So um, that was a really important quote that I wanted to share and let you know that, you know, we've been doing our due diligence over this past three months to really keep your kids safe in, in this new environment. And I will tell you just in the last it was 10 days between March 19th and April that we actually turned on 562,000, a little over that, uh, students in Teams and in Hangouts as far as their chat environment. So um, as far as that active learning and the communication, that is something that we did turn on and we did not expect that. Um, but we certainly were able to giddy up and help whether they were in a Google or Microsoft environment, especially since we are preferred partners and we are the only ones that have access to those uh, Teams and um, hangouts environments. So I wanted to share that up front, especially if you guys are thinking about going into next year, what does it look like with a blended learning model? Um, you know, how many of you are going to have kids on site versus virtual? These are things that we can help you with. 
So, you know, before we went into the March, June hiccup, right, um, it was interesting because I got this report back and I, I think it's, it's fun to kind of talk about because, you know, oftentimes we're so concerned about students, um, faculty, outside adults coming onto our campuses and having weapons um, harming others. And that has been a big conversation over the last two years, as we know. We've implemented security cameras, we've implemented door locks, um, shadow proof glass, all of the above. And that's something that we have done to best protect our students, our staff, our community. And what was interesting is I got this quote, this, this percentage back where it, it said to me from my team um, and our data com compliance people that 37% of threats about student violence are sent electronically. And I don't know about you guys, but I stepped back and I said 37% of threats about student violence are sent electronically. That doesn't make sense to me. That seems like a very, very low number. And their return to me was no Gretchen. That number is accurate based on the fact that we have 1600 school districts and 5.1 million children that are actually protected by gaggle. And so when you think about that across the country, that 37% is a much higher number when you look at the pocket of, of service that we're providing to those kids. The other thing I wanna share with you is 70% of students who attempt suicide tell someone of their plans or give warning signs. And that tell is interesting because, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, telling someone was us actually going face to face to someone and saying, hey, we're in trouble, or telling that a friend might be in trouble. Nowadays, the kids actually do tell, but they use their digital technology to do so and to um, cry for help, to share with a friend, I'm in trouble, I'm not feeling so good, I'm cutting myself. Um, I have an eating disorder because I'm anxious. Um, I believe that so-and-so is gonna be violent or in turn, so-and-so has been violent to me. And what we see a lot of is that happening within the school district domain. So where Gaggle comes in to support you is we work as, again, the insurance to your filter, your firewall, your one-to-one -one initiatives, as well as social media a lot of the time. And the reason being is because you are giving your students access to that digital technology within your district. And so we think, myself included, think that that is always protected with the things that we have in place as far as SIPA compliance, E-rate, funding, et cetera. But that's not always the case. These kids are very savvy and they, they share with one another. And that could be in Microsoft environments with email and OneDrive and Teams. That could also be in your Google email, your Google Drive, as well as your Hangouts. And we see that all the time. One of the questions that I guess asked pretty often is, well, you know, if they know that, you know, it's being monitored, they're not going to communicate. We want to make sure that they're able to share with one another. And I always come back and say, I wish that was the case, but the data has shown us that they do not stop communicating in those environments, even if they know that Gaggle is in place. And so what I would suggest to you and what I would have you take away from this is based on your acceptable use policies, your par parents sign off saying, hey, we need our students protected in our digital environment. Um, and they say, okay, if you're gonna use technology, we understand that we're signing off and that they're protected. At the end of the day, that is our obligation as a district to protect those children in their digital environments and think a little bit outside of the box versus what is typical um, and understand that where Gaggle comes into place, we can see a lot of the things that these other services cannot see, although they're awesome, right? I'm not gonna ever say anything bad about a service that is protecting a child all day. That's what I care about. but we are able to prove and show you um, what we find differently than what other services would find. And I'm gonna take you through an exercise to show you that as we move forward. Also keep in mind that your kids are not necessarily communicating more in email, which a lot of people think. We find that 76% of the student incidents that are emergency incidents that we find are found in um, Google Drive or OneDrive. And that is because the kids are actually creating things like chat rooms with one another they're also um, sharing slides with one another about plans of suicide, um, how they're going to do it, or sharing um, you know, a calendar invite for maybe a drug deal, or hey, meet me at the CVS to pick up my vape. And the kids say, yes, I'll be there. No, I won't be there. Maybe I'll be there. And so we see a lot of that. And I want you guys to keep that in mind. That's something I was super surprised about when I came in with Gaggle. I did not know. Um, and I wanted to make sure that I, I point that out. Are there any questions so far before we move forward? We have not had any, have had any come into the chat room as of now. Okay, all right, yep. perfect, I'll keep going then. Okay. 
So obviously our goal is to ensure the safety of students by combining technology with real people. And I'm gonna show you exactly how we do that and talk about that a little bit. Um, because I can tell you what we're here to do and why we do what we do, but you need to know how in order to be able to get to that next step. So first of all, we have a machine learning algorithm and a proprietary patented anti-pornography scanner. Understand that our company, it's our 21st birthday this year, so everybody's getting a kick out of that with Gaggle. Uh, it's our 21st birthday this year, so we're celebrating 21 years of being a privately owned company. Um, our CEO, Jeff Patterson, has worked diligently to continue to develop um, and implement uh, safety and measures for your students and their best safety. We've also added a staff component as well. We've seen a lot of staff struggle um, with mental health, uh, stress, anxiety. And so we've actually been able to monitor the staff as well. And how we do that is with our machine learning algorithm um, and our patented proprietary pornography scanner. That is gonna do a quick word search, content analysis, um, also skin detection to be able to under, identify and understand, okay, is this a situation where maybe it's a mother and daughter getting a pedicure in a picture? Well, that wouldn't be something that would be concerning. Or maybe it's a seventh grade girl that is tied to a bed with a sign that says, don't help me. We know that that might be an issue. What we're gonna do is we're gonna flag that and it's immediately gonna move over to our live safety team. Um, our expert review and our live safety team is what really stands alone with Gaggle. Um, we have a tremendous amount of people, over 100 people, that are actually perusing any of your documents, emails, et cetera, um, images, attachments, video, to determine if a child is in crisis or if maybe it's just a false alarm. And if it's a false alarm, let's say that mother-daughter getting a pedicure, it's going to get tossed out. You're not just going to be inundated with a bunch of alerts. That's not how we work. Um, but if it is a cause for concern, that's where we're able to escalate that and take that to the next level, which is rapid response. In a rapid response situation, after it has been not only flagged with our machine learning AI, but then also reviewed by a live safety person that is um, a psychologist, a sociologist, a teacher, um, a police officer, um, emergency response, suicide prevention, rape crisis, those are the people that specialize with Gaggle in looking at your information. At that point, if it gets escalated, we're gonna know that there are three different tiers. It's either gonna be a violation, which is our lowest tier, Violation is normally a instance of profanity or vulgar language or inappropriate sharing of pictures. So an inappropriate sharing of picture would be, let's say two girls um, in their bikinis, they're in fourth grade and they're sharing a heart um, sign with their hands. Not a big deal, but I don't necessarily know that we want that being shared within the district domain. So in that case, um, there are a number of things that we can do to actually alert you if that's cause for concern. I normally see with violations, our younger grades being the most of concern with violations because we all know that if we catch them at 10 years or younger, we have a better chance of actually having that conversation with them from a digital citizenship standpoint so that they are safer in their communications. That next tier is a QCon. Um, that is gonna be questionable content. That is a situation where we are seeing things that are cause for concern as I like to refer to it, it's the calm before the storm, essentially. So those are situations where kids are communicating with one another about um, suicide, but they don't have any intention on actually, you know, having a time frame around it or how they're going to do it or when they're going to do it. They're talking about their eating disorder. They're talking about how they're cutting. Um, it's cyberbullying to the max. Uh, it's also situations of sharing of professional pornography or sharing of cartoon anime pornography. In those cases, we are immediately going to send an email with a um, full synopsis of what it is that we've seen, um, what it is as far as the breakdown of your building, whether it's in middle school, high school, elementary school, or other, um, what building it's in, who the student is, and let you know um, this is a cause for concern so that you can act on it however you have um, established the best practice for your safety and security um, SEL planning. That last tier that is most cause for concern is gonna be your PSS. That is a possible student situation. That is when we know that there is an emergency to a child. We know full on that that child is in crisis and we have to act very quickly in order to be able to protect the child and let the district know that that child is in trouble. In those situations, it is going to be sharing, sharing of child pornography. So there's a child pornography distribution issue going on. We know that there is an instance of acts of violence to others. Uh, weapons being brought onto campus, 
drug and alcohol abuse, um, situations of rape, family violence, or um, other discrepancy where a wellness check might be required, and also um, suicide self-harm. We know that that child is for sure uh, talking about suicide, taking their life, how they're going to do it, when they're going to do it, um, and that they have a plan in place. And at that point in time, we're not only going to send you an email so that you have all that information, we're going to set you up with our implementation team to be on a group texting system where it could be individual building, um, your leaders at that building level would get a group text, it could also, administration could be put on that as well. Um, we're going to want you to respond to that text circulation that we have going on. And if you don't, we're going to pick up the phone and we're going to call your safety contacts to make sure that someone is being able to take care of that child. So I like to make sure um, that I share that with you because that's really important. One story that I would like to um, talk about, which is really tough, and some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about today, everyone is, is really sensitive. I, I know that. You guys have all been there. You know it too. Um, but a story that really resonates to me that I like to share is about a young lady that was an 11th grader. And this was an example of a PSS emergency situation um, that happened a couple of years ago. And it's, it's on our website. You can hear the audio on it. Um, it's very interesting. It was outside of Wisconsin. And I will tell you, this young lady, um, high schooler, 6.30 in the morning, sends a note to her, her, her girlfriend. And it is an email. And she basically sends a suicide note that says, I'm not going to live today. I'm going to take my life. Um, I want you to know that I will strike down any bad boyfriends that you ever have. Um, know that this is not your fault. You've been an amazing friend. I love you so much. And I'll be looking down upon you. Um, there was some other stuff that was included in that that was that was pretty heavy that we were able to identify as, hey, this is cause for concern. We immediately picked up the phone, got a hold of the district. They had an administrator answer the phone and say to us, you know, thank you, Gaggle. We have it under control. At that point in time, Gaggle steps off. We let you do what you do best. You know your children and your families best, and you will respond accordingly. Uh, a couple weeks later, we received a call from um, the police officer that was on hand that worked with the district, um, who had a very hard time having the conversation with us, but offered to present with us at any point in time and share the story of what happened with this young lady. They got a call to bring in emergency response to the high school where she was going to be coming to school. Again, this was at 6.30 in the morning, so we all know um, school's going to start within an hour. And they called an emergency uh, response team in after knowing that she had already left for school. At that point, they started to comb the building and looked to see if there was any instances of her being around, um, if they could find her, et cetera. They actually found her in the girl's bathroom and she was hanging from the bathroom stall. She was cut down within 30 seconds of her passing away and she is alive today um, because of the quick action of the emergency team and we do feel that we helped with that. Understand that we were able to do that in under seven minutes from the time that we got the email, which by the way, Gaggle was able to intercept from going to the recipient, which was her friend. If you think about that, imagine that friend getting that note first thing in the morning. We actually intercepted that from actually being delivered to that email box so that we could help that young lady in the district get ahead of it. And so we are so thankful um, she's alive today. And that is the story that I like to share in how quickly we will respond to an emergency situation um, when it is an imminent, imminent threat to a child. Any questions on that? Has everybody got a good story picture of, of how we work? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move on. Now I'm going to show you an example of what we did for another uh, district in California. Obviously, the students' names are redacted. That is not information that we would share. Um, we have data privacy for the state of California, just so you all know. And um, I do think it's important to share those, some of the results based on what I've already shared with you on how we do things. So this is an example district, like I said, in California, they have 15,000 students. They actually asked us for a proof of concept. They wanted to do a um, data dump, essentially, in a scope of work snapshot of how their students were communicating within their Google environment. So we did just that in email and drive, and we could certainly do that for any of you as well. Um, it's a great way to be able to go backwards and do a pull of about 45 days to three months of data and how your kids were communicating and see exactly what was happening in each building, um, how many of those violations, QCONs, PSSs, would we have alerted you on if you were in real time. So you can see here, we went back in this district 
um, about one month in email and about three months in drive. We pulled all that student information for the district. We analyzed 2,870,000 items. And what that means is we go back to our machine learning algorithm. That's, that's the machine learning algorithm, the AI with the proprietary pornography scanner that, that combed through all that to determine if there was any cause for concern with words, skin, et cetera. From there, we found that there were 144,000 suspicious items. Those were all passed to our live safety team to review. So they reviewed 144,000 items. From there, we determined that out of that original 2 million that we went through, and then again, second tier, combed through 144,000, we found that 1,302 were instances that we would alert you on. Now, even better yet, that's a district of 15,000 students. You can see the violations there were 1,124 items. Those would be swear words, the F word, saying, you know, um, you're an ugly fat cow, but it's not going into cyberbullying. That picture that I described of maybe a couple of girls on the beach in bikinis, those are your violations, the lowest cause for concern. Where we saw the most cause for concern out of those 15,000 students was the QCONs, the Calm Before the Storm, which was 160 items, and the PSSs, which there would have been 18 emergency situations in a three-month period with those students of 15,000. You can see in the PSS situation, one was elementary, nine were middle school, and eight were high school. Two were violence towards others. Three were specifically child pornography that was located on the district drive that they would not have known about it had we not done this audit. And 13 were suicide self-harm emergency situations. So now I am going to show you some of the things that we found just so you can understand how these kids are communicating and what they're saying within this audit. Gretchen, before we move on, we did have a question come in. <clears throat> oh, sure. Um, Jen, Jen wanted to know, how does your filter learn and what are your false positives that cause trauma? So that's a really good question. Our filter, our filter, we don't, we're, we're not a filter specifically. Um, it's machine learning algorithms, which I'm sure you guys all know. So the difference between what we do um, is we're able to get into your OUs if you're a Google environment um, to be able to identify what's happening within your email and your drive environments. Where a filter comes into play is they're going to maybe search bomb, gun, kill, and the filter would alert you and let you know that a child was doing a search. What we're looking at is what they're actually communicating with. So it's what they're sending in an email, how they're doing um, in their chat room, that kind of thing. Um, we have such an advanced algorithm after 21 years. Um, it's, it's, you know, it learns on its own, right? Um, more words that are added to it, more things that we see, more phrasing context. That's how it actually grows. And so it's super, super advanced. If you guys are all familiar with, you know, how a filter and AI works, um, to, to be doing this for 21 years versus a lot of companies that are new to this, you know, maybe they've been, um, in the loop, um, really since Google and Microsoft came out, um, to be able to advance with that learning and, and how it learns itself as a machine. Um, that's, I hope I answered your question, but you know, we, we also get a lot of questions as far as like, oh, you know, there are certain scenarios where um, a cult might be involved uh, within our community, or there might be certain words that these kids use that would be cause for concern as like a code. Um, certainly with our team, we are ahead of that game all day long. We make sure that if you guys have any instances where you're starting to see a trend, that you let us know and we follow that as well. So. Um, that was the first answer to the filter, I think. And then what was the second question? Yeah, the, the second part was um, and about false positives. How do false positives cause trauma? And she expanded in, in her question actually too. So she says, if, uh, so if an email says, you're gonna, gonna slay on this test, wouldn't it be flagged? So that is such an awesome question. So yes, it would be flagged and it would go to our live safety team and our live safety team would be able to understand that slay which would be an advanced word, um, that's where the live safety team comes into play awesome. It would get flagged because slay would be a cause for concern, but our team would be able to eliminate that as a false positive because they would know that it was just two kids talking about a test and that they're gonna do a good job. And so that's where we really eliminate the false positives. You know, what we hear all the time is, you know, any filter that you're using, you know, they're gonna alert you if there's cause for concern, which is an awesome thing. But the districts don't have the capacity to go through all of those spreadsheet alerts um, it's just not possible. I know it wasn't possible on my end. I'm, I'm the first one to admit it and I'm embarrassed by it, but 
it's not something that we could go through. What we did was if a parent or another child or an administrator or a teacher came to us and said, hey, we think this child's in trouble, that's when we go back into the filter alerts, take a look and see if there was anything flagged with that child specifically and do a do deeper dive. Whereas with Gaggle, we're always um, sitting underneath that information so that we can get ahead of it for you so that you don't have to be that set of eyes or feel guilty because you can't look through all that information and it's a one-off situation. We're doing that for you every day, 24 seven, 365 days a year. And that's what's just incredible about what it is that we do. So I hope that helped answer the question. Thank you for clarifying it too. That was, that was really helpful. Anything else, Brock? Well, it looks like we're good to go on. Okay. So now I'm going to show you some examples from this, just so you can see how these kids were communicating and what information we were able to pull in what we call a safety audit review proof of concept report that we provide to uh, a lot of districts. I think we did over 90 this past year um, to be able to provide that information to those districts. So that's that's pretty exciting when we get that data, and it's it's you know it's hard because you don't know what you're going to see. Um, and I think any district that actually says, hey you know, either we need to go live with a pilot to be able to see what's happening in real time and how you all work um, and how you compare to our filter and firewall and our one-to-one -one initiatives, for example, just to see what we're able to gather versus what other companies cannot gather just because we do different things, right? Um, also that proof of concept, which is what I've described here is really, really good to be able to do a backwards report, not go in live real time, but get a good snapshot with students names redacted of what we found for a scope of work and what's happening in the district. So this is an example that we got from this audit. I have four of them for you. And I wanna talk through you know, what we would do. So this was in a Google Doc. Um, the child writes, so I'm sorry, if only I would have realized how much of a disgrace I am sooner, then maybe I'd have already killed myself rather than chickening out and tossing the suicide note away. Hopefully this time will be different. By the time anyone reads this, I hope to be dead. In this case, this is what would be flagged as a PSS situation. Um, you have some words in here, right? This is context, phrasing. Um, what does this look like as a collaboration? Couple words that are key. Killed, suicide, dead. That would have gotten flagged. It would have gone directly to our life safety team. Our life safety team would have looked over it and saw, hope this time is different. By the time anyone reads this, I hope to be dead. Obviously, that is a cause for concern. We believe that this is in real time and we want to get a hold of the district and let them know that a child is in trouble. So this would have been a PSS Okay, this next one is an email that was sent. Hey, you can Gretchen, see it at the top, student name redacted. My parents know you have physically hurt me. They saw you. Do you have a question? I, I just said you, you kind of glitched out at the end there. I'm not sure if that was just for me or the whole group. I'm supposing it was the whole group. So you might want to re, um, re-speak the last um, example a little bit. The one before the document? Yes. Okay, so this, this would have been a PSS situation. You can see that there are some key words here. Killed, suicide, dead. Those would have been flagged. It would have gone directly to a live safety team that would have been able to look at the context of the entire document and determine that this child is in trouble. Um, there is an end date, a time frame around it, and we would have actually contacted the district with an email a text, and then if there was not a response to the text, a phone call. This next one is an email. My parents know you have physically hurt me. They saw the mark you left on my neck from you strangling me, the bruise from you slapping me, and put two and two together. They knew I was lying when I said things like, oh, it's nothing, I just fell. In this case, we know that it's multiple students communicating with each other. We have reason to believe that that student is obviously abusing another student. In this case, um, this would not be an emergency situation because this was a past experience and the child is writing to someone. However, we would absolutely consider this a QCon, calm before the storm, and we would send you an email so that you could go ahead and have a conversation, uh, find out what's really going on. This is a video and, and this, is, this is interesting because I've had a couple of administrators really question on this. And, and this is what I like to share as we are gonna map out best practices for you. Some districts might want to have their alerts be a lot higher than what you would want, right? We're gonna do whatever is best practice for you and we're gonna work on it. We're gonna work on it together as a partnership. You know, you could call us a month after you already put certain things in place and say, you know what, this isn't working, we're getting too many alerts on this. 
and we could eliminate that. You know, so we work with you. Um, we have an incredible customer service team, safety team that is going to work with your teams to make sure that we have best practice in place. But this one right here is a video. This was a video within a female student's Google Drive. It's showing a male student saying goodbye and taking a handful of pills in a public bathroom. And this was on a Saturday morning. The male student saying goodbye happens to be the male student within the district as well. So it's two of the, the district students taking a handful of pills in the public bathroom. In this situation, we would obviously send the email. We would obviously try to get a group text together and say, hey, we think that your children, your students are in a public bathroom right now taking a handful of pills and saying goodbye. Um, that's a problem. One of the things that, that was brought up to me from an administrator was, you know, a lot of the times our kids for their theater English film classes will do videos about drug abuse and what have you and they have to present it. What if you actually got this video and it alerted us and this was a false positive because they were actually making a video that was going to be curriculum based. And our response is we're going to always err on the side of caution and let you make that decision and determine that before we would ever not send you this and have you have it. Um, we're not going to put the risk of your district or that child in danger. And so, but it was a great question, right? Because a lot of times that happens. So just know that a lot of our districts will actually call um, our customer service reps and say, hey guys, we just want to let you know this week might be a little dicey. We're doing a total sex ed thing and it might get kind of crazy with what they're writing and communicating. Or we're doing a lot of creative essay writing and I've asked them to write on something that is mental health related. And so just understand that you might be inundated with more things. And then we keep an eye on that as well. So this is an image. Um, this was an image that was in the district drive. It's a photograph of an underage female's genitalia exposed. Um, this is something that I talked about a little bit briefly. We're going to eliminate that image from ever getting on your drive. Um, one thing that we do at Gaggle is if we see that there is a child pornography related image um, that comes through and is flagged for us that we have to evaluate, we are going to intercept and quarantine that image and hang on to, hang on to it for you on behalf of the district so that there is no issue of child pornography distribution within the district organization, even if it was, you know, people trying to help, right? A teacher saying, oh my gosh, I found this and sharing it with the C CTO, for example. Um, it's still sharing pornography. We've Hopefully none of you have been in that position. I can tell you personally, I have been in that position. I've seen other people in that position um, when I was actually in a district when we were just trying to help and it was an accident, right? We're going to eliminate that accident for you and hang on to it. We are also uh, partnered with National Center for Missing and Exploited Children as mandated reporters. We're going to tag that child pornography image as well um, so that it does not get distributed. So we do that on behalf of the district. And then because technically it's the district property, that image that is being distributed, you can let us know what you want us to do with that image, but we're going to hang on to it for you until you actually tell us where to send it and to who. So that's a very important piece. In this case, um, it is a child pornography image. It is treated as a possible student situation, but with child pornography, because we are able to flag it and make sure that it is not being distributed and make sure that it is not on your district drive, that is one of those things that we are going to email you and let you know that this has happened, but we're not going to send a group text. We're not going to send an email outside of school hours because we know that we've already handled it for you. And when you come back, you can take care of it accordingly. Any questions there? We are good to move on. Okay. So this is one of the things that I really like to share as we move to the end of the presentation. I'm going to kind of go through now that you've told us that we've seen examples, how we work, how we can help. Um, obviously, you guys know we're willing to help you in any way, shape, or form to be able to give you that proof of concept. Um, with the teams and hangouts, we understand that pilots are important, whatever. Um, just, just let Brock know um, for sure uh, what, what it is that you'd like to do, whether that's that safety audit that I just took you through, or if that's maybe a three to four month pilot to be able to get your feet wet and understand how we're operating live against your other digital tools. Relief of liability, um, we are completely data privacy focused um, on your students' protection. So 
Um, one thing that I always encourage anyone uh, to look up is that Common Sense Privacy Program, that privacy agreement that you can look on Common Sense. Um, understand that Gaggle is the only service that has passed on that. So that's a really important piece as far as data privacy. We've also completed the SOC 2 audit, which if any of you know what that process is, it's about an 18 month process, I think, uh, quite a bit of money to make sure um, it's, a, it's a ton of data, a ton of digging that we have to contribute for in order to be able to best protect um, our districts. And then obviously we have the California Data Privacy Agreement. Uh, we talked about the quarantine, obviously for SIPA, COPA compliance. Uh, we have a new, um, service that is here um, and it hasn't really been marketed a whole lot but we're doing something with teletherapy which is pretty incredible so that follows all the hipaa um, obligations and compliance as well and if you're interested in that teletherapy for your students that is something that we were able to acclimate um, start we're super excited about it we're super helpful to you know go from the how the why what happened of gaggle to then get to the what next that what next is that therapy for your children and that's something that we are able to provide now with licensed therapists um, in almost every state, and we're really excited about that. And then obviously we talked to you a little bit about how we tag that National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, as well as we are partnered with Internet Crimes Against Children, um, specifically from a child pornography standpoint. So this is one that I would say to you, I think, I think everybody's gonna get a copy of the presentation, but just to be safe, if you guys wanna take a picture of this um, right now, that would be great with your phones. This is our unique features list. This is where we kind of stand alone and where we are able to provide sole source um, to any of our districts as far as um, information with safety security uh, within your district digital environment. So take a quick snapshot of it if you want. Um, these are the things that are really important to us to share with you so that you know moving forward why we are um, the very best at what we do. And then additional offerings that we have by Gaggle. So we offer professional development, both, both in a webinar training as well as on-site training um, for your Gaggle safety management. Gaggle safety management is email and drive combined. Um, we also will offer that as far as LMS um, and our speak up tip line. We have archiving of email and drive and just understand um, that we are able to, uh, for free, protect 30 days of that archiving of email and drive with your Gaggle safety management service. Our speak up safety tip line, if you're using Gaggle safety management, is awesome. I know a lot of um, states already have a tip line of some sorts. Um, what we have decided to do moving into the fall is include that uh, speak up safety tip line at no additional cost um, for any users that are actually um, using Gaggle for email and drive. And then we talked about how we also have Hangouts and Teams monitoring that is an add-on to that Gaggle safety management. And we have ways um, integrations to protect LMS. Um, so whatever LMS you're using, let us know. Uh, we are partnered right now with Canvas, just so you all know. And then we are able to often, uh, based on those spreadsheets that we had talked about and those alerts that you get um, that we can't just comb through, most of the time we're able to also uh, partner with the district to cross-check those alerts um, with the Gaggle Safety Management as well, and we're happy to help you do that. So this is another quote that I wanted to leave you with. Um, this was a really important piece because I know that when we walk away, um, people always have a tendency to say, oh my gosh, what happens next? Like we have to get our principals involved and our guidance counselors and everybody's overwhelmed and what have you. I promise you with Gaggle, it literally will make their jobs easier. Um, you're not gonna be inundated with a bunch of alerts that aren't meaningful. You're not gonna be questioning or your team technology department's not gonna be questioning, oh my gosh, is this really a suicide situation? Or is it not? You know, when those people aren't really qualified to be able to determine that from a technology end, we're going to do everything that we can to make sure that you know that when we send you something, it is a cause for concern and it's a way for you to actually get ahead of a problem. Um, it's being proactive versus reactive right now. And we really encourage you to give us a shot to be able to give you a proof of concept and let you see exactly what we do. So with that, I want to thank you all for joining us. I want to open this up for any questions that you might have now that I could answer for you, um, and I'm happy to do so. Oh, and our last slide. Don't forget to fill out your session feedback form. Um, that's a very important piece, and we wanted to make sure that we uh, pitched that as well, because that's important for the group here that organizes this really cool virtual event. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate you letting Brock and I present to you and learn a little bit more about Gaggle, and uh, anything that we can do for you, we're happy to help.